Welcome back to Watercolors with Karen. I'm so glad you're here and I'm excited what we're going to paint today. This is going to be a little greeting card. I did one prior to this, um, just using some echinacea and some purple flowers. This one's going to be a little, not hard, but just a little more complicated than my other one. So what I went ahead and uh, did was draw this out first. I just made a simple little fence. And as you can see, it's not that straight. It's very easy to use. I just used this little Bic number two pencil, started with here, made the little in-between on the fence. And these are gonna be little simple hollyhocks with a little hummingbird flying um, to come to the hollyhock. So we're gonna do this really simply. What I'm using is these Strathmore watercolor cards. Um, they're acid free, which is wonderful because the color won't fade. There's 10 cards and 10 envelopes and they make such great gifts and people can frame them if they want because they're five by seven. So they make a perfect little frame in the five by seven so people can keep it as a little gift. So that's what we're gonna to attempt to paint today. We'll put this over here. And the first thing I wanna do is start painting our hollyhocks. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use a number six. Um, this is a Da Vinci Cosmo Top Spin Brush. Got a nice little point, easy to do. And we're going to start with a Quinn Rose, and I want it to be fairly thin to start. This is Quinacridone Rose made by Daniel Smith. So we're going to put all around here in a really thin color. And we're going to leave those centers white for now. They will eventually be yellow. And just come around here. So just in my drawing, and you see my drawing was very, very simple. It just needs to resemble hollyhocks. It doesn't have to look exactly like hollyhocks. If I was going to do a very detailed drawing and this was a big painting, then I would want my hollyhocks to look exactly like they are supposed to look. But serious, this is a little greeting card. And the whole point of this is to have fun with it and to not make it complicated. So that's what we're doing right now. So we're just gonna go around to each of these. We'll come back in with some other colors, but this is what we're hoping to do. These right here are little buds coming out. So that's why we have those. So you see, I'm just taking a really light color going around each of these. This is something that is fun to do and maybe on a rainy day or you just wanna feel a little artistic at some point, this is a good project to be able to do. I'm going to have a paper towel handy. I use Viva, you don't have to, but I like the smoothness and the thickness that I have here. So that's what I choose to use. You can just tear a little piece off and it's all handy for me. Now I know that these aren't totally dry and that's kind of where I want them because I wanna put a little yellow center in right now. And if it spreads out a little bit into my pink, I'm okay with that because I'm just dabbing it on here. So we'll just go to all of these and I kind of want that to spread out just a little bit. Okay, so now let's see. We are going to, we'll be using a lot of different colors in that. This is just for now and for starters. So I'm going to go to a green. I'm going to start with this pale green. And this is, if you don't have this color, don't worry about it. Just mix yellow and any kind of green to try to achieve this nice light green. Right in there. And we're gonna paint the first coat of the green leaves. They're all different shapes, so you don't have to worry about getting them perfect. Again, this is just, just a fun little thing and you've gotta have fun with it. It makes it so much greater if you can just have fun. If you go out of the lines like I do, as long as you have a clean finger, oops, I really messed up, didn't I? Look at that. But no big deal, because we're gonna cover that with a stem anyway. Okay, so we'll go to this little leaf, and here, all right. And then we 
have one more here. Now, as soon as that's dry, I can fix that. So it's not a problem. Okay, we're gonna let that dry for just a moment. And then while we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna work on our fence. And this fence is gonna be super simple too. So I'm going to use a little bit of this Verdita Blue. You may think that that's kind of funny for a fence, but I'm going to add some brown in it. And I think I'm going to use some Quinburnt Orange because any brown and any blue makes a lovely gray. And that's what we have right now is a really nice gray. Hopefully you can see this. I'll make sure that you can see. So I just mixed a brown and a blue to get that gray. So what we wanna do is in this shadow line here, let me just sop that up a little bit. I got a little hair sticking out here. There we go. All right, so we're going to write where I think the shadow would be on the inside. This is the inside of the fence here. I'm just gonna put a little line just like that. Now, that's too hard of a line, so I'm dipping in my water, drying it on my brush, and I'm gonna carry just a clean, nice little line here, softening that out just a little bit. If it's too wet, just damp it on your paper towel a little bit. So we don't want it to go all the way across. We're just creating a little shadow at the fence line, okay? Now, we'll take the same gray, and I want to have on my post like this, I want to particularly have it come down on the left side. So here's what we're gonna do, just drag that down. I've got very thin paint right now. Just have that come down here. And this just kind of makes our fence stand out a little bit. That one got a little dark, so again, dampening. Having it go on my paper towel, I can just soften that right back down again. Same thing here. Running out of gray, but we're, we're gonna be good. Okay, so I know I'm gonna soften that down again as well. And trust me, I will come back even again on these fence, fences because we want them to look like fences before we're done. This is the last one here. Just come right down here. Okay, so now we should be able to go back to our little hollyhocks. And see where that yellow ran? I'm okay with that. It actually looks kind of cool. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put, we're gonna to go to our Quinn Coral. It's made by Daniel Smith. Our first color was a really warm color, the Quinn Rose. Now we're gonna to go to a little cooler color. And right around here, because I know this is dry, I'm going to just push a little bit of this color around the edge. And I'm going to dip in here and soften these out. So I don't want them to be too harsh. Just soften that line out just a little bit. Go back into here. Just go around here and we're still not done. We're going to make them even darker on this edge, but this is our first pass, I wanna say. Okay. Can you hear the birds singing now? I hope you can, they're so beautiful. I think the finches is what I've come to um, recognize as having a really, really beautiful song. And it just makes me happy when I hear the birds sing. So I'm going to use this little scrubber brush right here. And I'm just going to lift out a little bit of where I put that in and see, you, you're not even gonna be able to tell because the other part is gonna be green. And you can do that with a brush too. I'm having a very, very light touch at this point. I don't wanna disturb this paper because this paper is very light. See that, how that just lifted it up? It was almost like erasing it, so that's pretty cool. Now, the next thing I wanna do is go back to my number six and I'm going to go to a really, oh, let's see, I kind of want it to be, yeah, this is like a, um, 
trying to think what color this is. I should have those colors. It's a, um, goodness, it's a wine color, but that's not the color of it. So I will try to get that color before the end of this video, hopefully. And this is what we're going to do. We're just going to take it on one side like this and make this idea that this little hollyhock has this little bit of darker color here. And I'm trying to see if I have that written down here for you so I can... It is a Daniel Smith, and it's Quin Violet is what it is. Quinacridone Violet. See, I would feel so bad if at the end of the video I forgot to tell you what that was. So you see how thick I used it? And that is so cute. Now, these little hollyhocks are coming along. So we also have those little buds. So I want to take a little of this real dark color right by the base of the buds and just put a little bit of color there. And I want to soften those out. So again, when I soften out, I do water, dip in my water with my brush, take most of the water out, and that way I can just soften out those hard lines, okay? All right, now we gotta do those stems because those will look kind of funny if we left the stems like this. So I want that to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to take my brush down on these stems all the way down here. Now you don't see it here because the fence would get in the way, but on this other one, you would see it. So it would come all the way down here. Right down here. Okay, so now we can't leave our leaves like that because we want this to look kind of professional. So we're going to take what's called a sap green. And this is my sap green. I don't need very much. And anywhere it meets shadow like this fence, I'm just going to put a little bit here. And where this meets my flower, I want a little bit here. And the bud will definitely put some there. Now I want to soften this out, same procedure. I don't want to go too far without softening because I don't want them to dry. So this just gives us a little bit of making it look more realistic. Okay, let's do the same thing up here. So especially where I want it darker wherever the flowers would touch. Now there's no flowers that touch here, so we're gonna use our imagination, but we want our light to come from this direction here. So there we go on that. Soften that one out. I need to get a little more sap green here. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing at the base of this one the base of this one right along the flower. And you can have this card made in like 20 minutes. And it just, it makes people feel good when you've taken the time to make something. I think people like that, so. All right, almost done here. Now, because I really like this sap green on top of the pale green that we used, I'm going to go ahead and on one side of my stem, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Just on the one side, so that there's a light side and there's a dark side down here for sure. All right, and sometimes what I'll do and I think I'll do it here. I have a really dark green. It's called Paraline Green. And it's really dark, 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 dark. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of olive green. If you don't have those colors, don't worry about it. Just get some kind of darker green. You can even take like a, a dark blue and add it to your green and you can get that same effect. So what I want where the flowers meet, I want it to be a little bit darker right here where the flowers meet the stem underneath here. We would have a little shadow right in here, right underneath the fence at the top of the fence. 
This just kind of gives it a little bit of more shadow here. And let's see, I'm going to put this little stem just a little bit lighter. Now some of this, I need to just carry this down. So again, I've softened my brush with just water, dampened it, I should say. And we'll just pull some of that down. I want to show you on that blue what I was talking about. So say I just didn't have any of that, those colors I mentioned, you didn't want to pur purchase them. So let's go to sap green because that's a fairly common color. So I'm going to use a little sap green here. And I'm going to mix a little, uh, let's see, I'll just do cobalt because that's a, oops, wrong one. That's a common color too. So cobalt is a kind of a nice, pretty sky blue. So I'm just going to mix this in here. And can you see how dark that made it? Hopefully you can see this right here, this mix here. So this is just a good way, if you don't have those colors, just to mix a couple together. And you can experiment before you even do this video, um, if you want to follow along and just try some different colors out that go together well. I decided just to put a little bit extra of that green here. Now what I think I'm gonna do with this blue green, I'm going to make some just idea that that little leaf is coming out like that, just like this. We don't have to do it really perfectly, but I think it looks nice. And I actually like where that goes a little darker. So I'm gonna tipple that in there again. Yeah, just gives it a little depth. I really like that. Okay, so we're almost done with those. Now let's look at our little hummingbird. And we're going to make this a little ruby throated hummingbird. And so I want, remember where I mixed up that gray? I still have some on my palette. So I'm gonna make his little beak gray. So I'm just gonna drop some of this in here like that for his little beak. And then this green that I already have mixed up. This is the sap green. I'm gonna get a little bit more though. Okay, and we're going to make his head green. Don't do the eye yet. Just doing his head green. And we gotta leave that because that's where the ruby part's gonna come in. And just down here on his little back, going to do that. And then on those little leaves, we're going to go back into that gray really, really thin. And we're just going to kind of outline his little wings like this. So he's fluttering away. Sorry, this is curling a little bit. I'll try to keep it down. Okay, we'll leave that for right now. And I don't want to put that red in yet because I know if I do, it's going to go right in the green. It's going to make kind of a muddy color and we don't want that. Okay, so most fence lines have a little bit of lines in them. But this time we're going to go back to that Verdita Blue. We're not going to add, this time we're not going to add the, the um, brown to make the gray. And I'm going to use the side of my brush and I just want to put a little bit of blue in here on the same side that I already did the gray. Just like that, it just gives a little bit of texture and we will make some lines and I'll show you that too. Make sure I have enough to go all the way down here. I think I do. One more swab, there we go. Okay, so now let's check this out. We need a few lines, but I wanna let this dry. Now hopefully, my little Hummer is dry enough that I can put that little ruby red throat in. And this is going to be, I'm going to use a Scarlet Lake, which is kind of an orange red. And that should really show up good for his <clears throat> little throat. So we'll leave a little bit of a band here of white. And we'll just make that little teeny bit of red. That's all you need, just a little bit. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but um, hummingbirds have fairly large eyes for their little teeny body. 
uh, surprisingly so. And so I think what we'll do is just mix up a little black. And what I'm going to do is use some sepia. We don't need very much. That's even too, that is a little bit too wet. So I don't want it that wet. So I'm going to um, use less water here. There we go. That and a little bit of what I call Payne's Gray. And it just makes a nice, rich black. Don't need very much. So we got to try to keep a little bit of that white. And so we may have to use, we may have to use some of this because we're working on such a little teeny hole. So if I can't leave a white sp space, we'll use this doc, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and we'll put a little dot in it. I'm gonna to try to retain it, but I'm not sure with as little as that is if I'll be able to do it, but I'm gonna try. It looks like I might be able to use a little of that. Yep, I think I'm gonna to try to close a little of that in there. I think that's okay. All right, so I'm going to dip my brush once and where that other pile is, that I had gray. I'm gonna use a lot of water in that now because I want those wings just to have a little bit of texture in them. So I'm just gonna go like this and just put a little bit of wings in there. This doesn't have to be perfect, trust me, because this is just a whimsical little card, but I am going to use a little of that gray on his belly right here and just pick up a little teeny bit of that. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but they do have these little teeny feet and they come about right here. So when that dries, I'll come back with my black that I use for the eye and we'll do some little teeny feet. But I think in the meantime, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that black and just outline those wings a little bit. Okay, now for the line drying. Let me get another brush. This is my number one liner brush. See how thin that is? And I'm going to go back into that gray that I just made. And fences have some lines here, if you'll look. And this kind of makes it look more like a fence. So I'm just drawing really, really thin lines like this down. And I don't want them all the same. Sometimes you could even go like this. They have little knot holes in them. Right like that. It gets too, if you, if you get, um, these cards are so easy to correct if you make a little blooper or anything. Okay, so let me just check this out. It's looking pretty cute. Now, I think what I want just to finish this off, I want to make a little bit of a sky and I want to make just a little bit because I want a little more color in here. So really quick, I'm going to take my tray and just wipe some of these colors away with a paper towel. I just need a clean spot, that's all I need, right there. And I'm going to mix a little bit of what's called Horizon Blue. I'm gonna put water on my little palette first. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this beautiful summer sky blue. And I just want to tickle some of this in here it's really light. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I want it I want it to be bold just a little bit. I'm going to go right back where I was. Try not to get into my little bird, but I want just a little summer scene here. We'll try to use some white here and there so it looks like there's a few clouds. So this makes it really easy if you just come in and just kind of wiggle your brush around. Now, you can't outline it like this. You've got to close these gaps a little bit. But here, this is fine to, 
to leave that right here. Now what we can do in areas like that that's a little bit of a hard line, we can just soften that out just a little bit. See that? And now it just looks like we have a little summer sky here. And we're almost done. We're going to bring it down to here. And we want to imagine that behind this fence, there's probably some green going on. So I think we're going to use this nice olive green. And in between these slats, let's just add a little bit of olive green so we have something behind that fence. We'll just go right over that, just like that. And just gives it a little bit of color. Okay, almost done. Isn't this cute? And this would just, just be such a fun little card just to give as a gift. All right, I feel like this is just about done. Sometimes I just want to take it to the next level and I have to remember this is just supposed to be a short video. So stop me, but I'm just going to add a little bit of the sap green over the top of it, just a little bit. And I think we have, oh, I forgot the feet. I forgot the feet of the little hummingbird. So let's do the feet really quick. I'll go back to my little liner brush, go back to this time, I'll just use the paints gray. And I want it to be pretty thick so we can have little legs there. And I'm just gonna barely, barely put some little legs right there. And I think we have ourselves a fun little card. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like more, please just like the video. And um, I would love if you would subscribe because I'll keep producing some videos, hopefully once a week for now. And um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments. And I'll just see you the next time. Thanks so much.